What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we've got a card builder and I'm going to be matchmaking for UFC 301 in Brazil Rio de Janeiro in May. It's the next pay-per-view after UFC 300 and right now it's only got a couple fights on it, nothing major so I'm going to change that and I'm going to perfectly build UFC 301 to be the card that it can and should be and I'm going to do the matchmaker's job for them and just make some absolute bangers. So we're going to get started. I've got a 15 fight card. You know, the last time they were in Rio at the start of last year in January, had a 15 fight card and it was a lot of fun and I wanted to recreate the same kind of vibe, but just with, you know, higher quality, higher level fights, but still the same amount of fun. So we're going to get started with the main event. We've got Alex Pereira defending his light heavyweight title against the last person to win the light heavyweight title before him, also in a vacant fight. Obviously, I'm talking about Jamal Hill, who smoked and dominated Glover Teixeira over five rounds in Rio de Janeiro. So, you know, this could go very badly or it could go very well, and Alex Pereira could get revenge in front of the Rio fans that watched Jamal Hill win the belt, or Jamal Hill continues his conquest of Brazil and just keeps beating up Brazilians and beats Alex Pereira. I wouldn't be sure what would happen. It would be a very competitive fight. In my opinion, I would pick Alex Pereira to win personally, but I'm not exactly confident about it. Jamal Hill definitely has the capabilities to win. But ultimately, this is just a banger fight. It's got a storyline behind it. Pereira defending his belt uh, for the first time against the guy that like vacated the belt for him to get the title shot and also beat his coach. So that would be a sick fight. I think that's a great main event, perfect kind of storyline for that Brazil card. And this would be a way better fight than Ankalaev. Let's be honest, no one wants to see Margaret Ankalaev wrestle fuck Alex Pereira for five rounds or just submit him early on and win the belt in Brazil. That would just be dead. So if they're going to go to Brazil, do it. Jamal Hill, that's way better of a fight in terms of style-wise, and it's also got more of a storyline than the Uncle Live fight. Sure, Uncle Live, he can get his title shot at some point in the future after he wins seven more fights on Contender Series and then the Ultimate Fighter, and then he can have an LFA title shot. We know how it works. He's not getting a title shot around these parts, but... Uncle Live, he can wait his turn. Jamal Hill, if he's ready, he seems to say that he is ready to come back pretty soon. I think May would be enough time. He injured himself in like June or early July, so it'll be around 10, 11 months. I think that's enough time for a return from his injury and come back and try and win the belt back from where you won it in the first place because you're kind of a paper champ because you only got the belt because... Geary vacated, and then the other vacant title fight was a draw. So, yeah, Jamal Hill, not the biggest fan of him at the moment. You know, bros yapping on Twitter a little bit too much, but Pereira could definitely shut that up with a left hook to the jaw and KO him. Hopefully that would be what would happen, but I'm not too confident. But regardless, we're going to move on to the co-main event. Sandre Pantoja said he needs to fight on this card. He said he is going to fight on this card, but right now there isn't really a clear opponent. But I'm going to go, and I know a lot of people aren't going to like this, I'm going to go with Brandon Moreno to complete the quadrilogy, trilogy, whatever you want to call it, and just get this done out of the way one more time. Just do it and be done with it. If Pantoja wins, be done with it. If Moreno wins, I wouldn't say Pantoja deserves an immediate rematch, although maybe he would definitely have a case because they've fought like four times already and he's won three of them. So yeah. Regardless, I think either guy, or sorry, only Pantoja would have a case for a rematch if Moreno won, but still, I do think Moreno is going to beat Brandon Royval in a few weeks' time in Mexico City, and then it's not even that I think he deserves it, but it's more just I know that the UFC is going to do this and give him another title shot because Brandon Moreno has fought for a UFC title seven times and he's never defended it, and yeah, so... Brandon Moreno wins the belt, loses it, wins it, loses it. Like he, this guy's just dropping it back and forth, back and forth, um, and he just cannot defend the title to save his life. So, I'm gonna do this fight, assuming he turns around uh, relatively quickly. It'll be about three months, or like two and a half months after he beat. Uh, Roy Val, if he does that, I think he will, and I don't think he's going to take a heap of damage, hopefully. If he does, then maybe that puts a spanner in the works, and then maybe you have to go with like an Amir al Bazi, even though he probably wouldn't deserve it, or a Manel Cap, who also probably wouldn't deserve it. But 
I don't know. We'll figure it out. But Pantoja himself said he's going to fight on this card. So I think they're just going to give him an opponent regardless. Like, if Moreno turns around and can do it and fight, they'll give it to him. If they need to go to El Bazi, they'll go to El Bazi. Hell, they might even go to fucking Kaikara France if they're desperate. Like, I do think they are going to get Pantoja on this card. And the reasoning behind the Moreno pick over anyone else is just because, again, it's got a bit of a storyline. You know, Moreno just beat Figueiredo in Brazil the last time he fought there of course, um, and now I've got another Brazilian champion. The Brazil crowd weren't too fond of Moreno last time, but I think this will be a great fight. It's always going to be a fun, competitive matchup whenever you do it. So yeah, I'd say you just do this, make it happen, get it out the way. I know a lot of people aren't going to like it, and it's not like I think Moreno deserves it, but it's just an element of realism and what I think is going to happen. So yeah, we move on to the next fight. Edson Barboza is a fun Brazilian fighter. And he needs to be on this card, on this pay-per-view for sure. And I think the most fun and uh, reasonable and deserving fight to match him up with is Josh Emmett. I think that's the perfect fight to make. This is an exciting firework striking battle. Someone's probably going to go out cold in this one. Whether it be Josh Emmett punching Barboza out cold or Barboza getting like a head kick or something like that. Either way, someone's getting finished, in my opinion, but this would be an extremely fun fight to make, and I think you just got to do it, because I'm not hearing Josh Emmett saying he's going to fight anyone yet, um, I doubt they're going to do him against anyone else, like, I don't know, maybe they rebook the Giga Chikadze fight, but I would way prefer to see this against Barboza than Giga Chikadze, to be honest, like, Giga Chikadze can just go away. Like, bro, you beat Alex Caceres by decision, and then you're calling out top five guys. Like, just calm down, mate. Just chill out. Maybe if you're lucky, you can get Arnold Allen or something like that. Or, you know what? Fuck you. You get Diego Lopez after he beats Yusuf, and then you can just lose that fight. So, yeah. Anyway, went on a little bit of a rant about Giga Chikadze. But regardless, back to this fight. I think this would be extremely fun. I think this is a matchup that a lot of people want to see. This is a fight I was calling for on UFC 300. I wanted to see this. Um, and Lucas Tracy did as well. I know he said that was a great fight that he would want to see. Um, but I don't think they're going to do it. Just doesn't seem like a fight that they would actually put on 300 the way they are stacking this card up. It seems like they're just going with a bunch of champions and former champions and stuff like that. So I see them doing Edson Barboza for sure on the Brazil card because if you look at the guys, like they don't have a lot of big Brazilian fighters. Like Costas can't fight, Bert Gilbert Burns can't fight. Like there's just a bunch of guys that aren't going to be able to fight on that card. Um, and so they've got their two belt holders, which is sick. But apart from that, I just don't know um, if they are going to be able to get a bunch of other big names. But Barbosa is a pretty big name and he's a fan favorite fighter. And I would love to see him on the Brazil card. And again, Josh Emmett, in my opinion, perfect opponent. Emmett. He got an impressive win against Bryce Mitchell the last time out, but let's be honest, he was looking a bit rough before. Like, he was not, like, in that fight in particular, but, um, like, his last two fights before that, he lost pretty dominantly in both of them. So, he still, in my opinion, doesn't deserve a really high-up opponent. So, I think you fight back, you take a legend fight, like, especially for Barboza's a legend. I wouldn't call Josh Emmett a legend, but Barboza's a legend of the division. You take that fight and just make it happen in the feature fight of the pay-per-view. Great matchup. The next fight, though, is... This is a pretty easy fight to make, in my opinion. Recently, a main event for March 30th fell out because one guy was injured and hadn't signed the contract. So, I'm just going to rebook it. Vicente Luque versus Sean Brady. Rebook it on this card, on the main card of the pay-per-view. And just make it happen. There's not a lot to say. It's a fun fight. It's already booked. Otherwise, I would have done it against maybe someone else. But I looked in the rankings and there just weren't a whole lot of guys for either one to fight. So I'm assuming this fight is, in fact, off that March 30th card. And I'm just going to put it on this card, to be honest. Like, Luque's Brazilian. You know, I don't know. Nothing else much to say about it, to be honest. Just make it happen. It'll be a funnish fight. Hopefully, Luke wins in front of his home crowd, but there is a good chance Brady gets it done. But still, it's just a fun fight and rebook it again because there's not a lot of big names on, like, Brazilian names. Like, you can't do Almeida. You can't do Johnny Walker. He just got KO'd. You can't do Paulo Costa. Like, you can't do Gilbert Burns. You can't do Oliveira. There's just a bunch of Brazilian guys that you cannot do in the, like, on the Brazil card. So I'm saying one of them, of course, is Luque. I think 
it wouldn't have been because he would have been in that uh, March 30th fight, but just chuck him on this card and yeah. But let's move on to the main card opener. Hanato Mani Moicano called out a bunch of opponents to fight on the Brazil card and I had to think long and hard about who to give to him on this pay-per-view because I think he should open up the pay-per-view and I have selected Benil Dariush as the opponent. I know that's probably not going to be the popular sentiment. A lot of people probably aren't going to have that fight as the one they want to see. But in my opinion, it's the perfect fight to make. Dan Hooker, I would like to see him take a bit more time off and not rush back from the injury, and he should fight the winner of Jim Miller versus Bobby Green. And then apart from that, like, Jalen Turner, I just don't think that's, like, overly fun of a fight to make. Like, I don't know, just doesn't seem like something I want to do. Um, and then the other guy he called out was Paddy Pimlet, I guess, but I don't think Paddy's going to fight on the Brazil card, and I do think they want to put Moicano on the Brazil card. So I say you do him versus Benil Dariush. I think this is the fight to make. Grappler, intriguing fight. It's not going to be a complete washout, in my opinion, because even though Benil is going on the downhill a little bit, and has kept kept getting cracked and caught and KO'd in his last few fights. I don't think Moicano's a guy to KO him, so this would be similar to the Gamrot fight, in my opinion. Moicano doesn't wrestle as much, but he's got great jiu-jitsu, and I think this would just be a fun competitive fight. I would probably actually lean Dayush as of right now, because I don't think he's all the way washed. I think his chin's gone, but I don't think Moicano's a big power puncher, so... Make it happen on the early, or sorry, not early, on the main card opener. Open up the card with Money Moicano. He can have another cool speech in front of his Brazilian fans and get it done and make some money, you know, Money Moicano. And then he can call out another YouTuber, maybe call out MMA Joey, you know, the real fat pig of MMA YouTube. So we're going to move on, though, to the prelim headliner. I think it's always important when you're going into the pay-per-view on the last fight, the featured prelim. They don't do it well a lot of the times, but I think you you have to go in with a big, exciting, fun fight that's going to get the crowd excited and have the like have the energy up going into the main card. So I think the perfect fight to do that is Matt Frivola versus Elves Brenner. These two guys are two great, fun lightweights. They've been calling each other out recently. They've pretty much agreed to the fight. Obviously, nothing's been signed, but I do imagine this fight gets made. If it was on the main card, obviously would not complain. It's a fantastic fight, but I do actually think the headlining prelim spot is where you put this. This will be a banger. Uh, Matt Favola's got the power, crazy striking. Uh, Brenner's technical, also got some sneaky power of his own, got great cardio, good chin, you know, beat Guram Kutataladze, came back and beat him. So this will be a really fun fight. Win or lose, I don't think the fans would be disappointed unless Brenner got like one punch KO'd immediately. But I doubt that would happen. I think this would be a war for as long as it lasts, and even if Brenner lost, the fans would still be happy with the result and be excited. So I think that's the perfect fight to headline the prelims, but we move on to the next fight. It's already booked on the card, Kaio Braulio versus Paul Craig. It's a fun fight. It's already on there, so I'm not really going to talk about it too much. I'm going to pick Kaio Braulio to win this fight personally, but I could see Craig getting a weird submission out of nowhere. But yeah, fun fight. I don't think it should be main card worthy, to be honest. Like, if it's a Low quality, poor card. I could see it being on the main card, respectfully to these two guys, but I think you want to have your big guys, like your big names. I don't think Barallo's quite pay per view, um, like pay per view main card worthy just yet, but maybe they do it and give him a bit of a spotlight, but I don't know. I just personally wouldn't put him on the main card, but still, chuck it on the prelims. It's a fun fight. But we move on to the next fight. There's a Brazilian contender by the name of Joanderson Brito, and he has been aggressively calling out the same man after every one of his wins. I'm not sure what his issue is with the guy, but he's fighting this weekend against a man named Touchy Feely, and I think he's going to win that fight, and then I think the UFC should make him turn around in three months time and then fight so I'm talking about Dan Ige versus Joe Anderson Brito it's a fight that needs to happen give Joe Anderson Brito his wish he keeps aggressively calling out Dan Ige hey, motherfucker. it's very funny um we enjoyed a lot it's like an ongoing meme you know when Dan Ige got announced to fight Lerone Murphy Brito was like posting yawning emojis and stuff then uh Lerone Murphy pulled out they re-announced Touchy Feely as the replacement, and Brito is just like, what the fuck have I got to do to fight this guy? But I assume they're going to chuck him on the Brazil card. He's a fun guy, pretty marketable. He's got a fun fighting style, and I think this is a perfect fight to make on the prelims. So yeah, make it up in UFC. Brito deserves a ranked opponent. So it could be Lauren Murphy, could be Caceres, could be any of these guys, but 
Yeah, I think you do, Dan Ige. Give the man his wish, you know. Give him what he wants. Dan Ige, a motherfucker. We move on to the next fight. And I think, you know, there's a man who is widely known as the biggest crybaby in MMA right now. No, I'm not talking about Ian Gary. Maybe he could be number one, but maybe the second biggest or one of the biggest crybabies in MMA, one of the biggest yappers in MMA as well, Chris Curtis. I'm talking about Chris Curtis. This man's yapping away, scraped a decision over Marc-Andre Berriolt. No time off for you, buddy. Straight back in there, fight on the Brazil card against a big power puncher that hopefully will knock you out. I'm talking about Bruno the Hulk Fajaya. I think this is an incredible fight to make. This will be fun as fuck. Maybe Bruno Fajaya doesn't deserve a ranked opponent, but, you know, with Chris Curtis, it ain't even about a ranking, to be honest. Like, he kind of just fights. Like, he fought Mark andre Berriot, who kind of didn't deserve a ranked opponent, but he got one. So it's like, Chris Curtis is a guy that just fights, and then, yeah, fuck it. You fought in Canada against a Canadian, you can fight in Brazil against a Brazilian. Tough luck, buddy. Suck it up. Hopefully you get head-butted. TKO. Um, but yeah, I think this would be a fun fight. I probably would pick Chris Curtis to use a bit more technical skill, but I don't know. This guy was getting tuned up by Hermanson. He was getting tuned up by Mavov. Like, he just doesn't look amazing in his fights. He wasn't looking that great against Barry Alt, so I wouldn't mind Fajaya's chances, but this would be a fun fight on the prelims. Maybe I'm overstacking this card, but hey, what's wrong with overstacking a card, bro? The UFC should do it more often. But we move on to the next fight. A headline, the early prelims. You need another fun fight again to kick off the energy going into the prelims. And I think the perfect fight to do that is by matching up Daniel Santos, Mini Oliveira against Adrian Yanez, one of the more fun, uh, exciting boxers, strikers in the division. Um... He recently lost to Martinez. He kept getting leg kicked. Um, but yeah, Daniel Santos is a great fighter. He's fun. I'm not sure if he's ranked caliber yet. This will be a great fight to figure that out because Giannis is just outside the rankings. He was talked about as a guy that was going to be like a top-ranked guy, but he got chinned by Font and then just got his legs kicked apart by Martinez. So he needs to fight way back in, or not way back, but he needs to fight back in the rankings, defend his spot, and then look to try and get back into the rankings. And I think you do that by taking on a prospect, I would call Silver a prospect, um, or Daniel Santos, um, pardon me, but I think he's a prospect, especially in Brazil, if it wasn't in Brazil, I don't know if you do this fight, but you can match up these Brazilians with higher ranked opponents, just to try and, you know, give them a bit of a option, or uh, an a was an opportunity is the word I'm looking for. But yeah, this will be a fun fight. This will be great striking on the feet. Maybe Santos mixes in the grappling a little bit, but mostly I think this will be just a fun striking fight. Make it happen as the early prelim headliner. But we move on to the next fight. We've got two brothers, the Bonfim bros, and I'm going to match make for both of them. But first, I'm going with Gabriel Bonfim. He lost in Sao Paulo the last time he fought. He was tuning up Nicholas Dalby, and then he unfortunately came to the realization that Nicholas Dalby Dalby has beaten every single Brazilian that he's fought. I was tempted to chuck Dalby on this card and just do like him versus fucking Luke or some shit. Just continue the meme, you know, just Dalby beating up Brazilians. But instead, I'm going with Gabriel Bonfim. I don't know why I talked about Nicholas Dalby because he lost to Gabriel. He beat Gabriel Bonfim. But Gabriel Bonfim needs a rebound fight, needs a very winnable opponent. And I think Johnny Parsons is the perfect guy to do that. Get him a win. Easy stuff. i Maybe he loses, but if he loses, then just give up on him as a prospect. But I think you can still kind of work with him. You can still build him. He's got great skills, and I think he would sub Johnny Parsons pretty easily and get a nice win and a nice finish. But we move on to another fight. Another fight already booked on the card. Drakkar Close versus Joaquim Silva. Again, already booked on here. Probably wouldn't have made this fight if I was doing this from scratch, of course. But it's already on the card, so you got to leave it there. Chuck this down on the early prelims. It'll be a fun scrap. But whatever, we move on to the next fight. But I was talking about the Bonfim brothers, and we've got another one that needs to get a fight on this card, and I've matched him up with a fun, uh, willing opponent to have a nice striking fight and just scrap in the pocket. Jamie Malarkey versus Ishmael Bonfim is the fight to make, in my opinion. Very winnable for both guys. Probably more winnable for Bonfim. I think he would get it done. He beat Terence McKinney in his last fight, uh, in his last win, sorry. And then he just ran into Buenar St. Denis, who people thought, oh, you just got fraud checked. But Buenar St. Denis is about to fight, and in my opinion, about to beat Dustin Poirier. So that loss probably ain't going to age too badly for 
Mr. Ishmael. So I think you do Jamie Malaki's coming off a TKO loss to Nazrat Hakbrost in the first round. That's where I was initially going, but I was like, no, hold the pump the brakes, let him get a win, or let him at least get an easier opponent to just rebound. So I'm going to chuck him Malaki. It'll be a fun fight. They'll have a scrap, and I reckon he would get the better of it. But we move on to the next fight. Uh, you've probably been wondering, where's the women's MMA? Or no, you probably haven't been wondering that. You've probably been glad that there hasn't been. But Every card needs a piss break, so we're going to chuck uh, chuck one down on the early prelims. But, you know, we're not just going to do some random, ugly, le- lesbian Brazilian like most of them are. Let's get some eye candy on the early prelims and do Natalia Silva versus Tracy Cortez. This one is a great fight for the fans. Everyone wants to see this fight. It's an incredible stylistic matchup. Um, and, yeah, it would just they would match up very well. Um, I would definitely enjoy watching this fight and there would be some high level martial arts on display. That's all I'm going to say for this one. You guys can fill in the blanks. You know what's going on here, but we move on to the next fight and already on the card. Borjas versus Costa. It's a fun scrap. I'm looking forward to it. Should be an interesting fight in the flyweight division. Either guy could win. I would, I'm would. i leaning towards Costa. I think he's looked pretty good in his recent in his recent fights. Borjas lost to Van, who is also very good in my opinion. But Costa lost to Steve Ersteg in a close fight where he had him in a lot of trouble in the second round. So I think he's going to win. But it's a fun fight, good fight to open up the card. You're not putting anyone crazy good or like some high-level, high-stakes matchup on the first card. You just get slowly get everyone in there, but I'm sure people are going to already be in there for Cortez versus Silva because, you know, everyone wants to see that fight. Um, but, yeah, that is the card, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this card. Of course, I'll go through it one more time. Main event, Hill versus Pereira. Co-main event, Pantoja versus Moreno 4. Uh, feature fight, Barboza vs. Emmett. Second fight on the card, Luke vs. versus Brady. Main card open up, Moicano vs. Dayush. Prelim headliner, Brenner vs. Fravola. Another fight on the prelims, Borrelli vs. Craig. Ige vs. Brito. Fajaya vs. Curtis. Early prelims, Santos vs. Uh, Yanez. Bonfim vs. Parsons. Close vs. Um, Silva. Bonfim vs. Malaki. Cortez vs. Silva. Uh, and then, what's his name? Costa versus Borjas. That is my card for UFC 301 in Brazil. I think that's a fun, great card. I think a lot of people would enjoy the fights here. I think a lot of these have the potential to be really fun. I don't think many of these would be boring at all because there's nothing worse than some boring fights. That's what happens every time they go to Abu Dhabi. The fights are always boring. They get big names on there. Like, they get Hamza and they get fucking Islam and shit. I know he got a knockout, but the cards, the Abu Dhabi cards always suck. But in my opinion, the Brazil cards are always fun. Um, so yeah, I think this will be a great fight. Like the channel. Or what am I saying? Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Go follow my Patreon to support the channel. Uh, go follow my Instagram, Left Lane MMA, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody.